Budget LS Factory 5 Roadster engine overview coming right up. So once again, this is a uh, General Motors LS-based Gen 3 um, L33 5.3 liter, 325 cubic inch, uh, all aluminum, 310 horse from the factory, and it came from a 2006 uh, GMC Sierra 1500. Uh, let's take a closer look. I really like this configuration on the truck motors because it has two serpentine belts. One is the main drive here, and then separately is the air conditioning belt, which I um, am going to take off and not have air conditioning. Um, I think I got a really good deal on this. It was $2,000. It was on eBay. Um, the guy that sold it to me, he does this for a living, so this isn't like a one-off that he found. But he did the uh, steam line for me. He tapped and drilled the water pump, so that's one less thing I have to worry about. In addition, he put a standalone wiring harness on it. Um, this is, this is uh, new relays and fuses, so I'm really happy about that as well. How I'm going to integrate this into the Roadster wiring, though, I don't know yet, of course, and I may not uh, use this. Uh, the engine came complete with the um, ECU, which I do plan on using, as well as the TAC, TAC module, I guess this is called, and the gas pedal. Taking a closer look at the front of the motor here, obviously it's a Vortec. Um, I know that you can change these intakes to make them look a little nicer. Uh, I'm going to hold off on doing that until it's in the car and running. Looking at this belt here, I'm probably just going to replace this belt, you know, just, just because, but the belt actually looks okay. Now, um, this engine had 150, 160 miles on it. That's a little more than I would like. I still think I got a great deal because of uh, the video. If you haven't seen the previous uh, video that I did, you can see my engine selection. Um, and this guy had a video of this engine running in the car. So I'm really happy about that. It was up to temperature, uh, ran smooth. Came, uh, he gave it a few revs, went through the RPM smooth. One thing I forgot to mention, is the configuration of this bracket and pulley kit. You'll notice that this one belt here drives everything that's essential. Uh, water, main crank, water pump, uh, alternator, and power steering. And you'll notice that this air conditioning is a separate belt. I really like that because I plan on removing this and I don't have to reconfigure my bracket and pulley system. In addition, this alternator is nice and tight within the dimensions of the block. You'll notice on the LS1, LS6s, it's in the Corvettes, I don't know about the Camaros or uh, the Cadillacs or Pontiac, but um, that alternator is way out here. Um, and uh, you know, in the, uh, in the Roadster, I may have some dimension issues. Well, it doesn't look like I'm gonna have to worry about it here because it, this barely sits wider than the uh, valve cover, and I really like that. Looking at the right side of the motor here, uh, you can tell some, uh, I can tell that some touch-up paint uh, has been done, as well as you probably noticed some touch-up paint on the pulleys on the front, and I'm fine with that. Once again, this, this uh, AC compressor is gonna come off. Um, the wiring that goes with it, I'm going to have to open up these looms and I don't know if I can just remove all these wires and then from the ECU and then just de-pin it and, and that's all I need to do. Let me know in the comments if, uh, if you know otherwise. Um, looking at this big bulbous um, oil intake here, hopefully I can replace this with something a little more uh, low profile. It looks like that these... Um, these covers here, um, these valve covers, it looks like they were painted and they look nice. That's all I probably would have done anyway. 
Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we got the stock starter around here, which I just plan on using. Uh, I'm going to clean up these connections uh, a little bit, and it looks like it has been touched up with some paint. That's probably what I would have done as well. We're going to take off these. Uh, I already took off the stock um, exhaust manifolds that it came with, and I'm not going to use those because the kit comes with uh, stainless steel headers. Hopefully they match up really well. Um, I already taped these up, so my uh, five and three year old don't put their Legos in here or whatever, but I'm gonna pull these off and we'll stick our finger down there and see what kind of residue we get. Make sure we're still getting uh, a clean burn. Well, on the face of it, these all look really good. If I stick my finger way in there, you know, it's, it's clean. It's on those. Yeah, really clean. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, you bet. Now, of course, those could have been cleaned up. I don't know. Boy, it looks really good, though. Looks really good. I'm real happy about that. At the end of the video, I'm going to pull all these spark plug plugs and lay them on the table, and uh, we'll, look, we'll look through all of those. Let's take a look at the back of the motor. One other thing, these are the uh, 799 heads. I hear these are pretty... Uh, Desirable, uh, and I was also told these are the same heads they put in uh, the Corvettes. Looking at the back of the motor here, um, I've got the air intake. Uh, one thing I don't understand about this is what is this huge bulbous uh, chamber coming off the air intake here? There's no sensors that go into it. Uh, if anybody knows, uh, let me know. I don't know. Um, yeah, anyway, the air intake looks good, but there is a bunch of residue here. Uh, you know, it's pretty dirty right here on the outside, but it's definitely clean on the inside. There's the sensor. What is that? The mass, mass airflow sensor right there. Yep. And the hookup. Okay. Looking at the back of the motor here, I've got one of the O2 sensors hanging down and it looks pretty good. You can see the starter here. Here's the uh, 5.3. Um, I do see a little bit of oil on the back of this motor here. I'm not real happy about that. Hope It's probably coming from this rear main seal. I'm not sure, but it doesn't look like it's too bad that I need to open up the motor and fix that. Uh, you can see where it was painted. It looks pretty good. Um, notice all of these uh, labels on here. This is ground. I don't think these are stock because they're awfully clean. You know, he said he put a, his own uh, wiring harness, but I mean, most of this is stock on here. This looks like, uh, let's see, this is labeled neutral safety. That's kind of, I don't know how this works. That's kind of big for a neutral safety. And there are a truckload of wires going in there, maybe eight or 12. Uh, if you know in the comments, let me know. I'd have to remove, I'm looking to remove that if I don't need to mount that, but I do want a neutral safety um, uh, on the Roadster. I think I want a neutral safety and a clutch safety. So it has to be in neutral and the clutch in, I think. Let's see what this one says. Driver's O2, oh yeah, driver's O2. So it's got sensors on each side, which is fine. <clears throat> okay, here's one thing I need some help with. Uh, this says vehicle speed sensor, and then this says 4L60 trans plug. Now I'm going to use an automatic transmission, or sorry, I'm going to use I'm going to use a, a manual transmission, and I'm going to do an unboxing on that. That's going to be the next video. So this is for the stock um, automatic transmission. Let me know. Can I just remove this? Open up this loom and remove all of this down all the way in the wiring harness to the computer. I don't know if I can do that, but I'm hoping I can. Uh, and that'll clean up a lot of this wiring here. So anyway, I don't know if this is the drain plug for the pan or if it's on the side somewhere. I haven't seen it, I haven't found it yet. So anyway. Uh, and I don't know what this is for 
here. I mean, of course I can look it up, but let, let me know in the comments uh, what you think this is. Notice it's got the stock injectors on there, which I'm gonna keep. Uh, let's take a look, the left side. We'll take a look at the condition of these exhaust ports. Really good, really good. They're just dirty anyway. Yeah, really clean. I like that. Now, yeah, there's no soot there. Yeah, nothing. I like it. And once again, I'm gonna pull all these spark plugs and check them out into the video. Okay. Looking at the uh, oil filter uh, down here, it looks like it was dented either in uh, shipping, uh, crating up or whatever, but it's got a big dent in there. I need to pull that. There is some overspray on there, but uh, let me know in the comments what you uh, oil filter you recommend for me. I don't see a drain plug on the side of uh, the pan here, so I guess that is the drain plug on the back. Hopefully that's not too hard to get to with the transmission on there. So you can see that this, this doesn't look stock here. You know, it says alternator positive on here. And this looks like a stock uh, setup here. But once again, it goes to this uh, relay box. Does not look stock. This definitely looks new. And I'm not gonna use that, of course. Battery positive, that definitely looks stock. But I think this is gonna go away for a cleaner look. I obviously have the stock uh, alternator on here, which I plan on using. I know they make nice pretty ones. Maybe I'll put it on later, but I want as little to slow me down because I do want to drive the car one day. Uh, okay, I do plan on using uh, power steering, so I'm gonna keep this pump on here. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna tie in to the power steering rack, which is an option that I got, and uh, tie in um, to this input and output here. Uh, let's see, here is, yeah, here is a ground. That looks a little weak right there. This is all kind of dirty right here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably reloom the whole thing. Uh, I think I'll, I'll take, I'll take all this wire loom off in the beginning, and I'm just gonna zip tie everything so the wiring harness is totally naked um, for the installation. Let's see, once again, here's the exhaust stock exhaust manifold that I'm obviously not going to use. I got to pay to have that taken to the dump. Oh, yeah. One other thing on this wiring harness. So this looks like it's definitely all new here. Uh, the standalone harness that he, that he put on here. It says fuel pump power. We got tack, key 12 volt switch, check engine. That says brake light switch four wheel low won't be using that uh two speedometer now well, that says ac something it's been rubbed off there's a check engine light backup light key 12 volt uh, what's that say? check engine light tack yeah so that's pretty nice. Now, uh, I know I can't just tie into this and put 12 volts to it and call it good. I know there's a lot a lot more that goes to it. Here's a random, random switch. Well, see, this says electric fan number one, electric fan number one, and electric fan number two. So how am I gonna tie that in? I don't know. Uh, oh, here's my ODB port. Um, Kind of curious, there is only four wires that go into that uh, ODB port, but I guess that's all the data you need. I don't really know what this is for, to be honest with you. I don't know why it's on there. ODB, ODB, OBD2 port. Fantastic. What did this one say? Yeah, fan. Uh, let's see, this one's labeled cruise control. Well, see, I'm not going to use that. So I don't know. I guess I can remove all that and call it good, but I really don't know. Let me know in the notes. Okay. Let's check this last one. 
Now this looks like a relay that's all on its own. This says cranking, cranking signal. So I gotta figure out if I need that. You know, the hardest part of this build is gonna be integrating um, this wiring harness to the existing, that comes with the kit. Uh, and I understand that that's a Ron, uh, Ron Francis harness. All right, let's take a look at these spark plugs that I removed. Overall, I think they look pretty good. These spark plugs must have some kind of fancy uh, point to them, I guess. But I don't see any big deposits. Don't see a lot of soot on there. Looks like a pretty good clean burn. Uh, yeah, that one definitely looks like it's been eaten away a little bit. But everything looks like tip top shape to me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Well, that's it for the uh, engine overview for the uh, budget LS Factory 5 Roadster. Uh, please leave your comments below. I do read all the comments and I need all the advice I can get. What did I miss on this? And uh, what are your thoughts, pros and cons, especially about removing this AC compressor and the wiring as well as the uh, automatic transmission wiring. And uh, thanks for watching.